Hello and welcome back to another episode of Only a Bag, the guide to Italian travel. I'm Nathaniel Melor. And I'm Darcy Milton. Thank you all so much for coming back um, after just listening to the last one, hopefully. And if you didn't listen to the last one, um, that one might have more pertinent information. This is going to be one of those fun ones that we started going down a rabbit hole and thought, you know what? We should share this with somebody, this rabbit hole. <laughs> I think it's a fair way of putting it. Uh-huh. It also might be a much quicker episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. So yeah, if you have not listened to our previous episode on train travel, um, that one is, like Nathaniel said, it's much more practical information. Um, so if you're coming to Italy and you want to know about trains, go on back and listen to that episode. Um, and this episode, we are going to talk about uh, historical trains that you can travel around in and luxury train trips. Um and thank you to everybody, as always, for uh, liking uh, our podcast and uh, subscribing and following all the things that you can do. Thank you to the people who have left us comments. They make us so happy. And uh, yeah. all of that helps other people to find our podcast as well. Yes. So thank you for helping out a fellow Italian traveler. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> Um, yes, and if you have any comments, um, if you uh, like our podcast, you can leave us a, a glowing review uh, wherever you're listening. And if you have any questions, you can reach us um, at our email address, which is onlyabagpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at onlyabagpodcast, and you can read uh, articles by Nathaniel uh, on onlyabag.com. That, yeah, that's the, that's the sum of it. Nice. I remembered all of it. So exciting. Okay. So let's get into these historical train trips you can take because I love it. And I'm so excited that it exists. Darcy has discovered that she is a pharaoh equinologist. Yes. Mere hours ago. (laughs) I don't know if I can uh, ascribe to that though, because I feel like most pharaoh equinologists, at least in my head, know a lot about trains and are enthusiastic about them. It could be. I'm just excited about having a train trip in in an old school train but i think it's like it's like a gatekeeping thing like you could just if you're into trains i feel like you're into trains, oh i'm gatekeeping you know? i'm gatekeeping myself that's what yeah, i'm doing I think. okay this is like if you're into planes no one's like oh wait not you don't know anything about planes it's like it's kind of like the, the, i like you know whatever lincoln park it's like okay name all their albums and it's like i know two of their songs and i like the two of their, i don't know what is this i love green day y'all and i just found out the other day number one okay people out there are gonna be like duh darcy they're from california <laughs> you guys I thought they were English. When they sing, they sound English. Billy, little little Billy, what's his name? Sounds yeah, English. I, I never know his name. Billy um, Green, Billy Joel, Billy Idol, <laughs> Billy something, Billy Holiday. I don't know. Um, and who's the band that I thought? Uh, the Clash. What, the Clash. I thought one of the Clash's songs was, was a Green Day song. Uh, don't hate me, everybody. Because she's like, they have a really thick English accent in this song. And I'm, kind of, I'm spacing the song now. <laughs> and uh, it turns out it was uh, by The Clash. Uh, the Jail no uh i fought the law i fought the law yes yeah and like it's they really... sound english in that song it's an english band and they're called the clash so. and they are very popular <laughs> yes <laughs> in fact i think we have like two cds of their songs on uh, our computers so um, oh goodness yeah that explains that so okay, we're so, all learning that's what this so is so i love green day and the clash and i'm a pharaoh equinologist here we are we're redefining who you are <laughs> well into adulthood yes um as we should you can yeah. always you learn can always and grow. change yeah Okay, so let's now talk about these historical train trips that you can take in Italy. Yes. So there's a website called, let me read it from my notes, Fondazione FS Italiane. And it is a, it's it's owned and run by Train Italia, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But it is a separate website where you can go and uh, they have lots of different trips that you can take. They're like one day fun funzy trips you can take on uh retro and old vintage train cars and train engines like the whole train is old yes like genuinely old i think they have i think it's like they have different some are different years but it's like uh, some for the 50s some from the 30s some from the 20s mm-hmm. so it's like they try to match the car to the engine that pulls it yeah exactly and so when you when you go onto the website there's two ways to search one is you know typical transit ways you you put in your um the month that you want to travel because it's not these are not daily uh voyages um they are only available for certain days of each month and they're different every month um it seems like so you put in 
when you want to travel, like September, and where you want to travel from, and what kind of engine you want, like diesel or steam or electric. So cool. Um, and then it will line you up with, you know, what's available for that for that region um, and time slot. So um, it's not available in every region. It's only seven regions in Italy where it's available. Um, but there are a lot of the places where you guys will probably be going. There's Campania, which is, you know, the Naples area. Um, Piemonte, which is Milan. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Torino. Yeah. Because Milan, I think, is Lombardia. Okay. I think Lombardia is one. Mm-hmm. Um, Tuscany and Sicily. All of those are included. And there's a few others. Um, so you'll probably be covered. Um And it's a great, I think it's a super thing to do if you, obviously, if you're into trains, if you have kids, it's awesome. Um, So it's, it's more of an activity than it is like a way of getting from point A to point B, because most of them are round trip. um, And, and it's like a daily, it it only runs in a day. So if you're taking the train, um, for example, there's one that goes, goes from uh, Milano Centrale to another smaller town. Um, it will, you pick up, pick it up in the morning, you go to the small town, have a little walk around, get back on the train, go back to Milan. Um, Milano, Milan. Um, it's not like you can go uh, take it one day, spend the night there, and then take exactly. it back. Exactly, yes. If you, t- if you go to a town with the historical train and stay overnight, you'll have to take a regular train back the next day. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there's schlepping it back, basically. just schlepping it like a modern person, not on a retro train. Um, yeah. And like Nathaniel says, there's, there's cool ones, uh, that are from like the sixties. There's some that are from like the thirties and forties and twenties. Um, and you can go and it will tell you, um, like when you put in your, your needs, like I want to go in September, uh, in Campania, it'll show you what's available and tell you what kind of, um, what kind of car you'll be riding in. Mm -hmm. And then they unfortunately don't have great pictures available, but you can, you can look up that car, uh, like copy paste that name in Google and put train or, uh, train car or carrozza, which means not carrot, but carriage. Um, and it will, (laughs) it sounds like a carrot. It does sound like a carrot. I like that. And, uh, and then you can see the interior of those cars. I will also uh, just uh, throw out because you mentioned it's good for kids, uh, good for kids and family outings. It very much is. It's good for anything. I mean, I think also if you like trains or if uh, you just want to go, I don't know, experience the past. Um, however, some of them do have luggage options available. Mm-hmm. So if you happen to be on one of the trains that is going to like um, you mentioned in Campania, you can go from Naples to Pestum, and in Pestum it's kind of like a um, it's a site of like uh, some incredibly well preserved Greek temples um so you can kind of take the train down in the morning and then if you wanted to bring your luggage you could and spend the night or two nights um but you as you mentioned you would not be taking this train back you'd be taking the normal train back um however if you do want to take the these fun uh historical trains even just one way to a place you're already going to go i think it's a great option if it if it kind of coincides with your with your trip Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um there's some amenities that are not available, like compared to regular trains, like we talked about in the last episode, uh, have Wi-Fi available. They have chargers and outlets uh, in the seats. Um, they have uh, like a beverage and food car. Um, I don't know. Some of these might have a snack car, but I wouldn't guarantee it. And they definitely will don't. not have Wi-Fi. <laughs> or even like chargers, I yeah. imagine. They will have a bathroom, but it, I mean, you're, you're going back in time, essentially is what it is. Um, and it's quite affordable because they're quite short trips. They're not, you know, like an eight hour cross country trip. Um, it's usually like a few hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, the prices are typically about seven euros to 12 euros for adults, depending on the length of the trip and where you know, where it's going. Yeah. Um, and then for kids, it's, which are people under 14, I think. Uh, yeah, sorry. So kids four to 12 years old are 50% off um, the adult ticket price and kids under four are free. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's pretty nice. So it's similar to uh, the normal train line, like where the it, normal train line's under 15, I think it's like 50% off, 40% yeah, exactly. off and then free under four, under five. I don't know what the normal train line is. Mm-hmm. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. Because I know that also, I don't know if it's in your notes, um, 
if you if you like trains, if you like the history of trains, um, if you're traveling with somebody who likes trains, if you have a kid who likes trains, in Naples, I think is Italy's largest train museum. And um, not always, I think it's like once a week, maybe twice a week, they run a historic train from uh, the central train Napoli station. Napoli Centrale. Napoli mm-hmm. Centrale, Garibaldi is what it's also called. Ah, thank um, you. Just in case, uh, depending on, they might have heard it, Garibaldi or Centrale. Um, but you can get a train from there to the, uh, uh, I don't know if it's to the town that the museum's in or to the actual museum itself. I think itself. it's to, pretty close to That's, the museum it and it's the, only like, like five euros a ticket. Yeah, and that includes the price of entry to the museum, uh, which is actually kind of a fun little wow. deal. Um, and of course, you can still go to this museum, not on the historical train. You just have to take the normal regional uh, train and then just go into the museum. Um, but it's kind of a fun option for an immersive uh, immersive, you know, train experience, mm-hmm. uh, a little blast to the past just to kind of see what, what it would have looked like. Yeah. I think it sounds super cool. I definitely want to do this someday. Take it from, you know, one big city to a small town, have a little wander about town, get back on the historical train and head back to your, you know, original well, location. So I think they could work, uh, I, if you can even do them one way, cause I know you and I, like it's easier for us sometimes to be in a small town and go to the big city. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it could be a fun way to do that. Uh, again, you can take luggage on some of these. Um, and some of them are too, like, you know, they get, if they, if all the round trips are booked up, you can't just get a one way, um, like from that small town back. Um, and they seem, I mean, they go very slow yes. um, over some, I and think. some of them are quite noisy. We took a, we didn't intentionally book one of these ones, but, uh, when my mom was traveling here, we took a, a diesel train 1980s diesel train and it was amazing but so loud so two cars and i think quite was bumpy. Was. oh my gosh it was <laughs> it was it was kind of like they for, it was almost like i don't know like they forgot that we were all there yeah. and they just needed to get us to sienna and they're like Ugh, whatever we had just this in train tra- extra train we have in the yeah. yard yeah it was really kind of <laughs> wild it was i don't know it's like felt like after school when it's like you know too many kids are left over and like oh we should get you guys home and they just i don't know <laughs> figure it out uh-huh. uh, it's kind of what it felt like it was very cool but it very much felt like un- unintentionally historical like it's from the 80s and it was uh i mean you know none of the windows worked everything was peeled mm-hmm. it was just like really but everybody rough. acted like it was normal yeah so i don't know if it was the normal train for I that round it was wild it really was like we accidentally hopped through like a time loop yeah <laughs> and i was like are we going to the right sienna yeah. like the sienna sienna like the nice one this is the train the there current day yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah, that's like that's really kind of fun uh, fun options. And they you mentioned they're in like I think seven or eight different regions. Mm-hmm. So not in all of Italy's regions, unfortunately. I don't think there's any in Lazio, which is the region Rome is in. Um, but there are some in, as you mentioned, like uh, from Milan, Torino. I think maybe maybe from Venice. I don't know if Veneto has any, but I think so. Can't remember. But um, it is it is just you know uh, a small amount of regions, and they really are for like just a fun extra part of your trip. Um, you definitely need to plan in advance because they are only on certain days of the month. You know, for instance, two days of the month in the region you will you are going to be in. So mm-hmm. it definitely is a plan of ahead situation because they change monthly. Yes. Yeah. That's a good. One. Good tip. So I fully recommend it, and I really want to do it. Sounds I like amazing. That. I like that little label, and that's just that. That's the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about these luxury train trips, which are a far cry from This is something what we were just I would talking. love to do. I'm not as enthusiastic about it. I it- am a bougie person. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, but I would like to be one day. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Bridgerton recently, and I'm like, wow, I really connect with these people. <laughs> I think it's all the little cakes they have in the, in the uh, I don't know, all, all, there's always cakes in every scene. You also seems love like. fancy outfits. I do. I like fancy outfits. I like little cakes just when it's ready to be eaten. I'm like, oh, could I? A little slice? Why not? Um, it's amazing how not everyone had gout back then. I would have gout back then. I know it's also fictional, but still, I would have gout back then. Um, so yes, I've been because we're watching ben, uh, Bridgerton, and then of course I'm looking at these, uh, you know, luxury trains. I'm like, oh, well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> and then I looked at the price tag, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna mind if I do. So <laughs> best not. Um, so there are two, from what we found, there are two main proprietors of the luxury train trip, mm-hmm. right? There's um, the one I tried to give a fancy name to, Belmond. Yeah. I tried. I was like, maybe it's like Belmond, like like Belmond, Belmondo. Yeah, That's a Belmondo, word. like yeah. beautiful world or yeah, something. Yeah, but I think it's just Belmond. Um, I'm like an English company. Yeah, it's an English company, and they have these luxury train trips all over uh, the UK and Europe, right? And, and then, I think in uh, Chile in the uh, Andean uh, Andean sort of okay. train route or something. Andy train route, Andean train route, mm-hmm. train route. 
um, yeah, so they have, I think, three, uh, three historic train, um, train lines. I think they're basically, their, their whole thing is trying to, uh, like, bring back the, because they run, I think, what they, 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 they call it the Orient Express. They call it the original uh, uh, Venice Simpleton route, or whatever mm-hmm. it is, um, and I don't know how accurate that they is. call that the Ori- Orient Express because in the original Orient Express ran that route, yeah. Uh, and they're like, this okay. is essentially the original Orient Express. So I don't, and it's been running for like I don't know, I think since the oh, it's like twenty or thirty years it's been running. Um, so it's Through been Belmont, yeah, wow. yeah. So I don't know if there was. I assume there was some. I have no idea when the Orient Express stopped running. Um, so I don't know if it Belmont simply bought it when it stopped running, or if they own the actual name or what it but is. But an important note is that these are new trains. Yes. These are not authentic old trains. No. It is not the Orient Express that you are riding on. Yeah, no, uh, it they're is. very much new trains with Wi-Fi and full amenities and like air I don't conditioning. know, probably yes, certainly air con- Like uh, I think both of the companies touted like in their FAQs. Very important to read if you're planning on booking a trip. They have many rules. Um, but that, uh, personalized temperature control is available in every, you know, suite. Um, that makes sense. Like you all have that little heat, heat pump or AC mm-hmm. pump thing. And I also imagine because it is luxury that it, it, there's probably some sort of limited water amount because they can only bring so much water on a train. Um, but That's it also point. seems like they're catering to people who have high expectations. So there's probably a high limit on the amount of water you can use for a shower. And that's a good point too, because it's, uh, well, you know what it's, I'm curious about Hmm. and and it's tangent, tangentially related is I think one of the Saudi Arabian airlines, I don't know if it's like Saudi, Saudi Arabia, do they have like Emirates? Is that Saudi's? uh, I think so. They have now they like, I think last year they released first class, uh, or like whatever first class executive and you get a shower that's insane. And I think it's like 20 minutes in the shower is what you get. And I'm like, what kind of water? Like, and I'm kind of curious if it's one of those like low flow, high pressure things where mm-hmm. it like feels it like a be, lot of water. still, that's like, it's, um, like 50 ah, gallons of water. I don't know how much that. I have no idea, like but I'm like, and imagine how much that, because I think it's, it's like uh, a liter of water is a kilo. It's 2.2 pounds. So I'm thinking like how much, how heavy that has to be that it's. Do you have to like alert the pilots when you're using the shower so they know that the like. You're going to, like, the plane's going to start going a little faster? Or, like, like, yeah, the the weight of the plane is going to be different? Well, I'm curious, too, if it it gets, uh, if the water gets flushed or if it gets, like, not recycled but recaptured. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, it's a good point. Because I'm, like, if they're counting on, like, you know, we're losing X amount of fuel per every minute and the plane's getting X amount lighter. But, like, they're not counting on we're losing a couple hundred pounds over the course of this, uh, extra pounds over the course of this flight. Wild. That's insane. All that is to say, though, the, uh, I'm curious if the train trips are like that because I think they are, they're limited by 20 minutes. I am curious if these are each person gets a 20 minute shower a day, mm-hmm. um, or each birth gets a 20 minute shower a day, and then when they go to a new train station, they do load up on more mm-hmm. fresh water. I have no idea. I don't know how that works. Um, it is fascinating. I mean, this whole and the reason I bring up the the Bel- uh, you mentioned the Belmont one first mm-hmm. is because it is more. I think they are more geared towards actual train travel. Like intercountry. Intercountry. Yeah. Like you can take it. They ask you, where do you want to go from? Where do you want to go to? Like all these other ones, they do not run every day. It runs like once a week. Um, and they only go to major cities. But you can take it from Rome to Paris to, to London or Madrid to Paris to uh, to Rome to Brussels to uh, Vienna. Um, they only go to major cities and, uh, they only run seven days of the week, but it is designed for, I think, actual train travel Mm -hmm. like the Orient Express Express was, um, because I think this other one, uh, it's called La Dolce Vita, the name of the train line, but not the company. It's it's orientexpress.com is this one, orient-express, La Dolce Vita. And then next year in 2025, they're coming out with their like Orient Express experience, which is supposed to be like recreating the orient express i would i would love to be there i hope they give i hope like only a bag is huge at that point okay but and they're just like we'll give you free tickets here's my biggest issue because that's our audience i know that whoever's <laughs> listening to this is like that's where i need to be in 2025 i definitely want to do it i for sure want to try this out my biggest issue with these things and i'm gonna sound so hoity-toity i love it already hit me with it is that both of these companies intermix so many um cultures no not so many it's three it's it's like it seems very much targeted towards like Americans okay. and British people, 
Um, I mean, Belmont is based in the UK. Okay, um, got it. I was like, high what, British. What okay. they mix the most is they intermix lingo from Italian and French, like so much. And it drives me a little bit nuts, especially the Orient Express, uh, Express La Dolce Vita. Like it is, they target, um, they go around only in Italy. So yes. that's not something you can take to Paris. Paris. Yeah. But they use so many French words, like le joie de vivre. And I'm like, well, I, I'm sure I said that wrong. But like, why are you using that? It's an Italian based thing. You're all about Italy. And so both of them mix like, I don't know, like these luxury, very much American buzzwords, like American English buzzwords and UK English buzzwords with uh, like the joie de vivre and, and la dolce vita and like all these. I'm like, guys, just pick a lane. You know, it. like they're just trying to use all these luxury terms to draw people in. I don't know. I have a problem with that. If I may, the Dolce Vita, from what I read, is a, a base is a train line based off of the, I think an architecture firm actually designed the interior of the trains and I believe most of the exterior One as well. One architect, I think specifically, because they uh, have a, they have a, like an article about him on the website. Okay. Because I think it's a, um, do you know the name? Of the guy? Yeah. I don't remember. Because I, I read it was an architecture firm of two people. Oh, okay. Maybe it's um, two people. Well, at least the two people ran the architecture firm. And it was supposed to be like a mix between a... Because um, uh, Belmont isn't just a train company. They do like basically their big thing is all these hotels. I think they have like 18 hotels in, in Italy. And they have hotels in all of Europe, Africa, South America, North America, and Asia. Uh, so it's a basically a giant luxury hotel chain. Um, this is just, I don't know, a fun thing they also do. Like mm-hmm. a moving hotel essentially is what they... I think is what it's considered. Uh, the Dolce, la, la Dolce Vita is a little different, um, but also because the, the train is specifically from the La Dolce Vita period in Italy. So yeah, it's, it's very much inspired by, what is it, like Art Deco? The, yeah, the 60s, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything is supposed to look, uh, I mean, it's very coherent to this yes. time period, mm-hmm. um, which I think is, is one of your, uh, which is why I don't like the whole, why the Orient Express thing. I'm like, it's not. It's a different, fun um luxury train mm-hmm, trip mm-hmm. but is not the orient express it mm-hmm. doesn't go like east and west and that's you the know thing with i think uh, i guess i was thinking specifically of their new venture the orient express n- new one they're making for 2025 um is i think one head architect guy designer okay. um and it mixes like art nouveau and there's a couple different styles that are i mean i'm sure it's gonna be beautiful there's all of these trains are insanely oh beautiful God, yeah. and amazing and wonderful. And like the uh, everything is tailored so highly and that's amazing. But it's, I don't like that they're like saying they're recreating something because they're not. They're, mm-hmm. they're taking inspiration from things and mashing it up into sure, some sure. new luxury thing. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. I can see that. Because I think... Well, Lisa, um, by the way, if La Dolce Vita is listening to this podcast, um, we would love the chance to be proven wrong. Um, you can ask for our address. We'll have you send it. Uh, if we I don't know, have tickets work, you can just ask for email address, I guess, and send us tickets there. Um, I'm like, what am I talking about? Physical address. That's like the golden ticket in the mm-hmm. mail. Um, no, but those, uh, just to give a little ex- uh, explanation to people listening, um, the La Dolce Vita typically runs most of them are round trip. I think a few of the journeys are not, yes. but they'll do like Rome to Venice to Florence back to Rome. So it's a uh, two night, three day journey. Um, and then it's basically just you spend the whole time on the train. I think that like they do have an option, like a little tour if you want to. I was going to say, I think they do have certain packages that are based on like wine tasting okay um or they do have a wine region one it's one night it's from rome to chianti i think and back to rome the mm-hmm. next day and i think there's one that goes through matera and it's yes uh, that's kind of cool to me it, it does seem very cool and it's i don't know what t- changes it i mean obviously the location changes it but i think it's themed more on i feel like they said the word stone okay sure <laughs> i don't know if you get like geologist's a- <laughs> trip right there Eighteen thousand yeah. dollars, a very yeah. normal price for I don't most know geologists. If you get certain tours in your package that are related to uh, rocks. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not <laughs> and, putting down rocks. And I like love the, rocks, the but... troglodyte style of living, or Got I mean, okay. you're not going to live like a troglodyte on the train, obviously. But if Kinda you take wild, a though. tour of things then you like might. that, yeah, because they also have some, and this is where it gets confusing for me. Um, a lot of trains in Italy including the La Dolce Vita, will give the impression that a train can go from Reggio Calabria, which is the southernmost city in Italy, uh, over to Messina, which is the 
uh, easternmost city in Sicily. And Reggio Calabria... Eastern or Western? Uh, Eastern. Because Western is uh, the drink, Marsala. Oh, thank you. And Eastern is the beer, Messina. Thank you. Uh, for anybody who... <laughs> I like to That's remember my city is based on alcohol. Based on alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so Messina has a lovely beer with some sea salt in it. You have to swirl and then sometimes you have to tip the bottle upside down to get the sea salt. Oh, I want one of those. Uh, Messina, if you want to send us some beer, please do. <laughs> 100%. And then Marsala is this is a sweet wine from Marsala, uh, which is on the western side of um, Sicily. But Reggio Calabria and Messina are really not that far apart, but um, there is no bridge or rail system that actually connects the two, despite the fact that, like, I don't understand why, but, like, when you book a trick, uh, a ticket, even through train line or through La Dolce Vita, it's, like, they're like, oh, yeah, it'll go from, Reggio, like, it'll go from Rome to Reggio Calabria to over to this and to Palermo and to Catania and Syracuse. But you're very much getting on a watercraft in yes. between. Yes, I'm like, there's still, like, water train. involved here, and there's no way to connect the two. Um, so I don't know if it's a private yacht or if they just stick you on, like, the ferry like everybody else is on. I have no idea if it's like a sailboat or if it's something interesting. It's going to be something um, luxurious, I'm sure. Well, that's, I'm, I'm always curious too, because even with like Trinitalia, like if I got the executive from like Rome all the way down to Palermo, am I on the executive part of the ferry as well? Or am I just on like the regular old ferry seats? <laughs> uh, I know this is, I'm so confused. So all that being said is the, and that one actually, if that one does interest you, that is a one way. That one I also find mm-hmm. kind of funny because it's like, We'll bring you down to Palermo, but we're not actually going to bring you back to Rome. Um, so that's just a little bit of a, I don't know. It feels like they're just bringing you, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like, why are we going to I don't know. I imagine, though, they probably do it based on where people want to stay. So that makes some sense. people might want to go from Rome to, or from, from Naples or Rome to Matera and back because there's not a nice enough place to stay in Matera. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's luxury there very much is, though, Matera. Yeah. Um, but I, I also imagine that people who buy things in that price range want to stay for a while in sicily and in palermo and that could be a, yeah. there i mean isn't that one that's where one of the lotus uh what's it called white lotus? lotus white lotus thank you that's where one of the white lotus was was based in so, palermo uh, yeah near palermo really palermo, yeah it's like i don't know just didn't i don't i don't know i've never seen white lotus why am i so surprised i know <laughs> i assumed it was like because there's a lot of resort towns like taormina and stuff i assumed mm-hmm. it was kind of like based near one of the resort towns not necessarily uh yeah, maybe it was just supposed to be uh, near palermo i know it was in sicily it's been a long time since i've seen that but that makes sense though um so yeah that no i guess that does make sense if people are looking for like a kind of a nice like i mean i don't know what am i talking about we send a hundred we spend a hundred dollars a night on a hotel room so this trains a little out of the price range yeah. so um, let's talk about a little bit like what's involved what you get with these Yes. Trips. and we're not speaking from first person experience not at all we're speaking from uh, we looked at the websites today yes. and looked at what they provide and honestly though genuinely if i like this these are expensive like just an example i think it is for two people to go from rome to paris on the belmond orient express i want to just like a one night trip one night yeah it's overnight but it is technically two days and i think it's something like four thousand euros mm-hmm. five thousand euros person? something like that together i thought it was together was it per person oh, oh, I think that's per person um well i think it's a lot of money but i think i'm um, in my mind like if you're one of those people who are like we're gonna have a twenty thousand dollar honeymoon it's not a bad use oh, of yeah. some of the money to be fair like if you like the idea of slow travel if you're like we're gonna land in paris we're gonna have a beautiful two nights in paris we're going to have the most luxurious trip down to... If you want to stunt on your friends on Instagram... 100% is the way to do it. is the way to do it. Well, is it the way to do it? great question. Because at least on... I think on both of them. Maybe it was the the La Dolce Vita. I don't know which one it was. Anyways, I think both of them have policies about not using your phone or not having screens out outside of your room, um, which is lovely because then it's like people aren't disturbing you. You're not disturbing people with playing videos on your phone and and a lot of it is centered around curating this experience like you're supposed to interact with other people it's supposed to be retro and old school and orient expressy like it's not supposed to be you're supposed to go back in time a bit but with all the modern amenities of air sense. conditioning and stuff like that let me ask a question yeah when you order a coffee mm-hmm. do you think they make you ask for an orient espresso I hate myself for that joke. I thought it was good. Thank you. I hate myself for that joke. <laughs> I also I hate myself because it's called an espresso, and all I will say espresso, which I think somebody said is the French way to say it. Like it's some, not like actually I think in French. You told but like, me that. Yeah. It's like somehow it's some derivative. Is like oh, it's actually espresso, um, <laughs> and I'm like oh well, it's espresso here. And, <laughs> sorry. It's cafe here. Well, good point. 
<laughs> okay, so I don't know who's using espresso. Um, but anyway, yeah, sorry. Just, I thought of that, and I was like, I have to say it. Um, yeah, so that's a good point. It, maybe it's not a good way to stunt on your friends because you're not supposed to have your phone out. You're supposed to be interacting and not using screens. If you're supposed to be interacting or if you're supposed to just be enjoying it or mm-hmm. if you're... Because I'm also curious, Did you when you looked at these websites... Um, there's obviously a dining area and there's the, the sleeping area. Mm-hmm. Are there is there a lounge area as well? I believe there are several socializing areas. Okay, that's yeah. the biggest thing because we talked about in the last episode night trains, and that's the the one downside. If you're like on for some reason you're on a night, it's two nights or something like that, and if you're you're going really from like Reggio Calabria like way up north or something like that, and you're spending a whole two nights on the train, um, there isn't really a socializing area apart from if they have a dining car and some of them do, some of them don't. So it just is like, you just hang out in your room and mm-hmm. just um, chill out alone. Mm-hmm. Um, so. This is very much the, ex- the, the, you're having an experience. It's not it like a, even, even the Belmont, which does take you from one major city to another. It's it takes, you know, gets you from point A to point B in that time. You are supposed to be having this wonderful, amazing experience on the train um to be fair it sounds like i definitely would yeah so there are several <laughs> different locate uh, like different cars to socialize in and, okay. and spend time in there's like at least one bar on each train if not two i think um there's a restaurant um i think maybe there's something else i don't i don't think there's a library but there's you know several one of those experiential little, like, smoke spaces lounge. yeah oh but you can't smoke oh really because yeah because in italy it's banned and I think oh, all of the of EU, you can't smoke on, on trains. On trains. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I just assumed it was you couldn't smoke on private, uh, public trains, but I assumed it was like private transportation you could. I don't think so. That's no. interesting. Mm-mm. Good for good for them, yeah. for that law. But you can drink, so you still have one of the vices. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably do a lot more than that on these trains. Yeah. <laughs> um, that sounds really wild, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so some of the stuff that it includes, um, at least for, which one is it? The, the La Dolce Vita one, I think. They will pick you up yes, from you your uh, from your hotel and get you to the train, so you don't have to worry about that. That I mean, pesky that's, transportation to your transportation. Ugh. That is minimum, though. That's what I expect <laughs> from my trains. If Train Italia does not pick me up from the hotel, I'm like, guys, I'm literally staying at the train station. You could have done that. Um, so yes, yeah, so they'll transport you there. Um, one of them has like a, I think it is also the the La Dolce Vita, um, a a concierge in that when you meaning that when you book your trip you talk to the concierge and they tailor your experience to your desires. Um, I don't know how much is, of what that is could just that talk. possibly mean though. Like they just help you pick the room that you like the best, oh, okay. maybe, and make sure that you. I mean, all of them you can. Uh, let them know ahead of time your dietary needs. Okay. Um, they both are very specific in that they can... Uh, please let them know ahead of time if you're a vegetarian, vegan, stuff like that. But they cannot accommodate any religious uh, food needs, which I'm guessing is just because they have a limited kitchen. And, oh, interesting. And okay. probably limited supplies that are based on where they're leaving from. So they can't always guarantee that they're food is you know kosher or halal or anything like that makes sense okay um yeah so so then the concierge will like you know help you create your personalized experience um and both of them people are like at your beck and call basically so they claim um if you ever need anything there's what did you use the word steward i think in the last episode um so there's people there always um, I think valet when you get to this price point. Yes, the, yes, thank you. The valet, you <laughs> drop your. Ba- I mean, I don't think you're carrying your baggage at any point in this yeah, journey. The, say, this someone is... else is dealing with it the entire time. Um, oh, the food. There's like so many courses and and food options. One of them was like kind of redundant. I think it was the the Belmond one. That was. It's like there was. Oh, let me think. Okay, I think there's like the aperitivo and then the multi course dinner with. Uh, a sommelier of course, I mean, is the, of course. Is on board I think um, and has chosen your wines and we'll discuss that might also be where the concierge comes in at some point uh, okay. they help you choose your wines and your plating I don't know um, so the, the chosen wines and then desserts and different things and then there's it was the Belmont had like it's so funny they're like at midnight we brunch I put a voice on that 
Um, but they have like what? a midnight brunch. Yeah. So you have dinner and then you, there's, I don't know if you're expected to eat all of these things. It sounds like a lot of food for the people in the photos were very skinny people. So I don't think <sighs> they're eating at all of these opportunities. It reminds me of Below Deck, this yes. terribly trashy TV show. If you've not heard of it about people who work on private yachts, when it's too much of a, like if, it, if the, the sea's too uh, stormy to go out, like with the boat. So they have to stay at dock. And I think there's one episode. entertain people. Well, there was one episode where they, these people were only in there for one night. And their plan was to go out, park the boat, have a dinner, wake up, play with the, the toys in the water, and then bring them back by like 2 o'clock. But then it was too stormy to go out. Not even stormy, just rough water. Mm -hmm. um, and they couldn't, you know, the whole thing, they couldn't do it. And so they're like, we have to make the food experience. Because essentially they're now paying like $150,000 to just be on a floating hotel. Yes. The food has to be phenomenal. Um and that's what this reminds me of. It's like, if we give them enough amazing food, they won't realize that <laughs> we've charged them thousands of dollars yeah. uh, to eat brunch at midnight. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another, that's what I'm talking about. That's some of the, the cultural mixing that I was having a problem with. Yeah, uh, brunch, making yeah. its appearance. Like, in... We brunch at midnight. I'm like, yeah. what? That sounds like a J. Crew Valley Does Girl it, branding Do thing. the French even brunch? I Does any culture like no America is, is like the brunch culture? I feel like right? Americans are the ones who brunch. Right, that's what I'm thinking. I don't because like Italians do not brunch, no. and I don't think the French do either. And I don't think that, maybe the I British like do now. This term, do do they brunch? Do <laughs> they have brunch? A, is that a verb? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm not at this level well, of luxury. Like the, the, whatever this thing says, at, at, at midnight we brunch. That's yeah. verbing it. I'll yeah. verb it. Um, <laughs> do yeah. I'm just so curious because it seems like a very American thing to be like. Like, not pandering, but pandering to, like, I guess the American sort of... Uh, well, it seems like... You mentioned there's no phones and no screens, mm -hmm. but it very much seems like it's pandering towards young influencers. Yes. Without allowing them to do the one thing they make money doing, which yes. is taking photos and sharing about it and live streaming it and things like that, which seems like an interesting two... Like a double-edged sword. Like, on one hand, it makes the journey more enjoyable for everybody on board who's not an influencer um, or any, you know, somebody who lives their life publicly... But also, I think it means they have to be confident enough in their advertising that they don't need mm -hmm. essentially free advertising from every single person who's coming on mm -hmm. board, who's going to be taking photos and this and that. Uh, unless they're also, is like, I mean, I'm wondering too if it goes the other way, if they're like, all the good reviews won't balance out the few people who come on board. And if it's not, as you mentioned, like super tippy top, like, um, you know, when I drop my bags on the thing, I expect somebody to catch mm -hmm. them before they hit the ground and they, you know, that kind of stuff. And there, there are like in the FAQs, certain things will say up to the train manager's discretion. So I do wonder if that is a broad way of saying, don't take, like, don't give us bad reviews. Don't take photos. Don't, um, uh, interrupt other people's experiences because everybody's paying a lot of money to be here. And these people at this level seem kind of persnickety, which I guess if you're paying that amount of money, you can afford to be. Um, Makes sense, yeah. But if it's up to the train manager's discretion, they might have certain people like you who come in and just love everything and post about it. <laughs> well, I'm curious too because I think that's the thing with like um, – I'm thinking of like, the other luxury – again, we keep talking like we're like comparing luxury options here. We have not taken any luxury options as explained in the last episode. We took the business class on a train once and I was heartbroken when I accidentally turned down drinks and snacks because I didn't realize <laughs> they were free. So that is where we are coming from in this uh, episode. Um, but I'm curious about like um, – a lot of their photos are curated. The fo the food, yes. the rooms, everything. They very much seem staged. And that's what I'm curious about. Like if they're, because obviously nobody's going to stop you from taking a photo of your room, you know, in your room. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious as like, if the food does not come out looking like it was plated in a Michelin starred restaurant mm -hmm. or, because um, I, I mean. Which it seems like it always does. It does seem like it always does. Because also, I mean, like I think that's the thing with a, an airplane. I don't expect food to come out looking anything no. like it was, micro uh, except that it was microwaved, even in first class. Uh, I'm always so impressed too. Like those those first class, again, with the ones with the showers when they come out and they're like, you know, we just seared your steak for you. And I'm like, you have a searing thing I back know, there. Right? Um, but I think with, with a train, I'm like, no, you have, an, I assume, a kitchen because mm -hmm. They've had kitchens on trains before, and it's not like a new technology. Um, so I am kind of curious. Like, I do expect, I think, some level, I would expect some level of, like, uh, if not Michelin restaurant, because I know that some Michelin sort of restaurants are, you know, a couple grand per person. So it yeah. sounds about already the price of this um, trip. Yeah. I mean, no, um, the food looks like it is top notch and, and it's that's, supposed yeah, to be. And that's kind of what I'm curious about. Like, if it, if it, 
like if it's every night it looks like that because mm-hmm. um, this feels like maybe instead of like <laughs> traveling we should just get jobs on this <laughs> maybe they're hiring because um, mm-hmm. this sounds lovely and you mentioned to me too uh some of the rules were like uh no flip-flops yes okay but i need to finish talking oh, about i'm so food. sorry we got off we got off topic am, the yeah, point is that you me. have your midnight brunch right just as you do um and then breakfast is served in your room you know, of so course, you're most comfortable, of course. Um, served to you. You don't have to go get it like a pleb. Do they feed you as well or is it just... <laughs> they prob- They might for an extra fee. I don't know. Okay. I'm really not at that level. I can't say. It's not clear on the website. <laughs> it's, this is, I think this is me being hateful, but I'm also like, I would also like to experience this. So, you know. <laughs> um, okay. So then there's breakfast in your room and then there's like optional breakfast or like second breakfast i don't know these people watch in the the restaurant and then they're like do you want second breakfast i'm imagining that this is all things that are available to you and then you can choose you know all of the food yeah (laughs) are you uh, all of the food if it's like midnight brunch there's a 6 a.m snack i'm awake for both of those and then then there's a light lunch served before arrival which in one of the photos was several pieces of asparagus with like a white i don't don't know it was burrata or something uh but anyways a light after all of your brunching you need a light lunch okay <laughs> okay okay um and there's also also obviously i mentioned the sommelier what if, chosen what, if wines. The train? what if you're not getting off the train yeah well eventually you have i mean this is like for a one night okay. a two-day one okay. night journey okay yeah i was like what if i'm like staying on for another <laughs> night or two like um they're like oh but you're getting off <laughs> um i think there's there's the i don't know if you have to pay on board like the it's not a um, what's the word for weddings when it's a cash bar or a um yeah open bar open bar i don't think it's an open bar i think you still have to pay for extra See, that's drinks what i'm curious about too because it's like i always I, I know it's silly but i, I assume like in or actual and express they charge it to your room or something like mm-hmm. that um but i also kind of but i don't know i mean like i'm always just curious because i'm like if you spent thousands of dollars to be there it's kind of like I, you know a one twelve dollar drink would not go amiss yeah um, there might be a certain drink limit you can like cut two free drinks or whatever because yeah. the wine comes with dinner on the uh belmond at least and i think both wine situations okay, come so with just dinner. like a That's pre-dinner big, drink yeah um but one faq segueing into faqs one faq was what kind of currency can i use and i think that oh was one gosh. of the faqs on the orient express uh la, la dolce vita um and it was obviously euros um and then uh credit card they do not take personal checks I don't think anybody does anymore. Um, but interesting. I thought that was an interesting. Do they take except American cash? No. Interesting. Only euros. Interesting. What because. about um, like uh, because the Swiss use Swiss francs. Yeah. Do they accept Swiss francs? Well, no, because this one's just within Italy. In, just in Italy, okay. Because mm-hmm. I'm just thinking, like, other well, wealthy people are showing up, and they're like, oh, I have a packet full of Swiss francs in America. Yeah. Dollars. No, they're pretty clear. They only accept euros. Okay. Um. Yeah. So into some other FAQs. One that I thought was wild was, I'm going to, I worked at retail at J. Crew for like a year. So that's often my reference point for certain things. But their, their dress code was hitting me with like old, like the buzzwords that I saw in the little manual we had to read for J. Can't Crew. Can't wear knits and wovens or something? Yeah, you can't. Well, for J. Crew, you couldn't wear uh, tennis shoes with like a slouchy outfit. If it was like a casual outfit, you had to wear heels as a woman. Um, but if you were wearing a nice like cocktail style dress at work you had to wear tennis shoes things wow. like that you had to mix it up yeah and wow. you couldn't wear je- there was i don't remember them specifically anymore but this was hitting some of those notes so with the belmont they want you looking tippy top fans fancy um their language is very like floral too um like not patterned but like Oh, you know, um, like dress to the nines, do it up, girl. Like they don't say girl, but you know, that was your energy. Yeah, that was the energy. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, like very, like ball gown esque is what they want at dinner. Interesting. Um, and I believe you're required to change for dinner. That's what they were implying. Um, because it was like afternoon cocktails casual is, um, not business attire, but like cocktail business yeah essentially never wear jeans are banned you cannot wear jeans on the belmont trains ever um on the orient express la, la dolce vita you can never wear flip-flops i do love that at different levels of yeah. like 
like which battles they've clearly still fighting and which I ones they've given up on. I also imagine too that it's a bigger issue with Italians wearing flip flops. Oh yeah, Italians probably wouldn't. Not that many Italians would wear jeans. They all wear skinny jeans. Yeah, it depends though. That's a good point. If if you're told if you're telling an Italian to wear business, okay, uh, they're all business gonna wear their cocktail, like, yeah. they're gonna wear their nice pants. They're yeah. not gonna wear jeans. If you tell an American, they to might wear, wear business, their nice pair of jeans. Yeah, they might wear their two thousand dollar jeans. I always just thinking they're like, whatever. they're really nice Costco jeans, like pressed Costco <laughs> jeans. <laughs> Maybe, um, and and that train, the Orient Express La Dolce Vita, has a similar scheme for what you're supposed to be wearing. Um, they are a little more relaxed, I think. I think they use the word like comfortable clothes, but it's still heavily implied that you should be looking nice. Um, children, okay, so kids are allowed on the train. I think the Belmont is the one that says that it's up to the manager's discretion if your children are allowed to come in the bar and restaurant cars, which I imagine that if your kids are well behaved, yeah, then that's exactly. totally fine. But if they're causing a ruckus, they're going to send them back to the rooms. With um, one of the parents. Yes. Well, that was on the Orient Express one, oh, La Dolce okay. Vita. Um, children under 16 have to have an adult with them in the room. They can't be in the room by themselves. And, well, I wonder too, like how many times people are like, we're going to go to dinner by ourselves and our kids are going to have something in the room by themselves. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, you can't do that. If you brought mm-hmm. your kids on the trip, they're going to have to be with you like at dinner. Like you have to be responsible for them. Yeah. yeah. Which makes a lot of sense because I feel like, I don't know, it feels like on cruise ships sometimes you kind of just like, yeah, you where else them, could they go? Yeah. And I also wonder if it's a problem with like kids ordering too much room service or, or could I mean, that. causing a mess in the room when they're unattended. I don't know. I don't know what kids do. Um, probably be very respectful and clean and neat yeah i was very tidy as a child i know you were you were a small adult <laughs> you were benjamin buttoning your way into being a disheveled and yeah. disorderly uh, old adult. lady yeah, yeah exactly. i love it i like that trajectory for myself <laughs> um what else i mean this kind of sounds like a fascinating trip so far it to be honest i mean and like if you look at the pictures y'all it's beautiful it's like it's so lovely and luxurious i have to say that and it really like all the the both of the both the companies all the trains are really tightly tailored and designed and they're just beautiful the food the the decor oh one of them i can't remember which one it was i think it was belmond no i don't know it's like the there's a shift like literally someone comes on the loudspeaker and announces that like the tone is shifting like after cocktail hour or before cocktail or something like that like we're changing vibes y'all and people who work on the train go around changing the decor i don't know how oh my god if it's like uh do you remember matilda whenever uh the movie matilda sure um when trunchbull was going to come in uh oh what was her name the lovely teacher i know what i like saved her I can't yeah remember. pulled all these strings and stuff yeah, and changed exactly, the room exactly. yeah exactly i don't know if it's that kind of a situation like they're flipping walls or and if it's just like moving like they just have they're just putting candles around or something or changing the pillows or something yeah but anyways the vibe shifts they change the lighting they change the piano changes to like like not changes to and he just the the Starts player playing a different song yeah plays different music I mean, it's very intense. Um, and I think that's when you're encouraged to change into your elegant ball gown for the To evening. be fair, if I'm showing up on this, I am showing up with the tails. Like, what is the tuxedo with the tails? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with a very nice floral vest. Again, I'm watching too much Bridgerton. Uh, I'm going with ruffled sleeves. I'm going... I'm, the whole, <laughs> ascot, it. you got it. The whole nine <laughs> yards. I don't know what kind of shoe combination to wear with this, but it's going to be uh, great. The really nice slippery ones. Those I know, are the, right? The fanciest Those ones. Those little velvet <laughs> slippers that I think all... Oh, I was thinking the nice dress shoes with the leather bottom oh, that haven't been scored, so you're just yes. slipping all around. Yes, but it's on, on uh, carpet, so I think it's yeah. okay. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> uh, this sounds amazing. I know, but it's uh, it's expensive. So it's like like you said, like $4,000, $5,000 a person for one night, um, and that's the the you know the one night from belmont the 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 rome to paris trip you know and then the uh orient express la dolce vita is more tailored uh, targeted towards multi-day trips that are i think around the same price yeah because um, also like something like that in america would be really cool just because oh, super cool i'm thinking there's like already i think there's like a it's called skyliner or something like that but i think in the american west there's the um i think it's actually added to chicago is where it starts but um, there's that train, you can get uh, seats in the train where it's almost all windows. 
and the chair, the chair swivels so you can stare out the wind, like basically mm. out the wall at the entire window. And I know that some of the Swiss trains, um, it's funny, Darcy and I are not like that interested in trains in a, in a broad sense, but like, I when think, we start talking about trains, yeah, then we're, we're really like, man, I really like trains. This is crazy. Do I like? Why do I like trains so much? Um, but I think a lot of the Swiss trains do the same thing too. It's like they're they're almost all windows, so that way you can look at the Alps and look at the you know that's amazing uh, the lakes and the trees and the because um, they still have some of those just beautiful winding like mm-hmm. you know through the pass and through the mountains and. Uh, and some of these, I think some of these luxury trains still take the slower routes. Oh, I should have said about the historical trains. Yeah. Um, so, uh, some of them do take the old paths. Like when you're taking the regular fast train these days, often you can look off to the side and see where um, another is, uh, like the old train line that's the stone. Um, it looks like an aqueduct, essentially. Yeah, um, a stone passes bridge. Through, yeah, exactly. Passes through, kind of parallel with you. These older historical trains will take that train line. Um, sometimes which instead is instead of the fast one yeah and that's the uh cheap day trip 12 dollar situation i'm not talking about the the luxury ones this is like the easy affordable family one that takes the the old train line just super cool and i think the luxury ones possibly do the same thing i think because mm-hmm. i don't think they're obviously they're not high-speed trains because i would i think defeat right. the purpose of the whole purpose i think they are the slower trains so i think they take the um the only reason this is important by the way is because a lot of times I think the slower route was the more, um, like, picturesque route, mm-hmm. I think, for lack of a better word. Um, and it's the same thing with roads. Like, I think a lot of road uh, people ask, especially on Reddit, like, oh, I want to take a, like, uh, the Amalfi Coast Road is gorgeous. And there's no road like that on Cinque Terre. There's no cars, mm-hmm. really, in Cinque Terre. Um, and I think a lot of the coast in Italy, like, when they revamped, like, their interstate highway, federal highway system, they went inland um, and they prefer to go through mountains mm-hmm. rather than around the mountains. But the older roads, um, basically, I'm just thinking like kind of up and down like Campania, Calabria, Basilicata. It was a, like you're over the water mm-hmm. for parts of it's it. The same way in the U.S., there's like the famous A A1A, I think, is what it's called in Florida, okay. where you go along the eastern coast and it's slow and tiny street and it's beautiful. Yeah. Compared to like the super fast. Well, I've seen the Blue Ridge Mountain Highway as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's the thing. It's like here, it's like still they still have some of the older um, roads. Not really. They do kind of close them down because they're a lot harder to maintain when they're, you know, suspended over water um, or uh, some of these train. I think some of the train lines are only, um, uh, I don't know, basically renovated so well because they're so used for cargo. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't have to put cargo on the fast train lines, uh, which to be fair, the fast train and slow train will never share the same train line. But um, they don't make, I don't think they make like fast train for cargo because... You don't probably want like I mean some of the fast cargo trains we've seen are these like giant iron um, like steel bars for for yeah. uh, building. You probably don't want that going like two hundred fifty kilometers an hour down the. No, probably not. Down the thing that'd Just be disastrous. Like physics. I don't know if it could if it should be going that fast. Right. So these luxury trains though sound like a really good option for anybody who's um watching, uh, listening. What are yeah, we watching? they sound amazing. If but you're also, watching I phone. really want to do the historical day trip one. Yeah, the historical day trip kind of seems a little more speed uh, for now. Our speed, uh, wink, wink. <laughs> um, but actually, for real though. And then there's also one, there's a few other ones, by the way, for anybody um, who is listening, who is just curious about other options. I think there's one called Nightjar, uh, N-I-G-H-T, J-A-R. I assume it's a bird because there's a bird is their logo. Hmm. Um, and that, I think, is uh, starts in Brussels, goes through Vienna or goes through Germany and then goes to, I think, Venice is the first city they're adding on as their Italian city. Uh, but it's been running for a while into Germany and into Austria. Um, but there are a few other private um, overnight train companies that are like kind of modern day luxury, if that makes sense. Um, and I think still there is a um, a push to renovate some of these older trains or even just like, you know, um, some of the Freccia Rosa trains into overnight, nicer overnight trains because... Um, as we've, as we've talked about, these luxury trains are gorgeous, but not everybody has a 3,500 euros mm-hmm. a night. And it's an, it's, an, it's an experience, not it's not a practical exactly. transportation situation. And I think some of these trains do want to make up that difference between that and then like the intercity night train that's 250 where it's a lot more utilitarian, where it's just like a place to sleep and a shower for the night. Mm-hmm. So I think there's some places that are like, what about a 500 to 700 euro train where it's steep, it's pricey for like normal people, but it is also... Uh, I mean, it's kind of, it could be, you know, a lounge area where you can meet fellow travelers and it could be, you know, 
you get a meal and you get a glass of wine and things like that, uh, which I think people do expect, I think. I mean, mm-hmm. not expect, but like, I don't know, when you hear about Italian or European train travel, especially as an American, that's for sure what I expected. Yes. Like, I was like, oh, this is going to be nice. And then you're like, oh, this is not. <laughs> it's not not nice. It's actually quite nice, especially compared to American train travel, but it's not like luxury it's not the orient express it is not the orient express and that's really what the name of this podcast episode is not the orient express but still pretty close yeah um is that everything i think that's it so yeah if you um if you do go on one of these trains by the way especially the either of them actually any Any of them historical or or luxury please let us know please share photos if you can um please let us know how it was if it was enjoyable it was something you'd recommend to others uh if you go on the luxury ones please let us know um (laughs) If you have like extra tickets that you don't need or something crazy um, and they have transferable names, please let us know. Um, no, but if you do own any of them, and just because uh, we'd be curious to know how they are, especially the luxury ones, because uh, I'm just curious if they are as good as they sound. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, even like the, I'm thinking like the luxury tr- uh, flights for all the luxury in the world, you still get there the exact same time as the people who paid like a 30th of your cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're I think still in a tin can in the sky. You're still in a tin can in the sky. Darcy has a lot of feelings around flying. Um, <laughs> as you can tell. I'm scared of it per se i just yeah you just don't like it i think yes uh i know i I used to love flying until i did it a lot and then i realized how much i dislike flying um just because it's it's been made so miserable uh and that's probably why we like train so much we talk about trains we're like oh i could walk around and use the bathroom and get something to eat and drink and stretch my legs and then still get to where i'm going Mm -hmm. crazy and potentially wear my fanciest clothes Uh, a ball gown (laughs) with candles yes um so yeah um yeah if you, if you take one of these trains the historical ones as, as well uh, please let us know how they are we'd generally love to hear about it um and i think that's everything i think that's everything if you have any questions for us uh or if you want us to talk about something specific on an upcoming episode feel free to reach out uh our email address is uh i just forgot it only a bag <laughs> what is it only a bag podcast at gmail.com there it is perfect um, first try <laughs> you can uh find us on instagram at only a bag pod only a bag podcast i've been talking too long and you can find our website only a yes it is thank you thank you thank you um that's everything yeah uh, if you like this podcast you can rate us and review us yes uh, please tell a follow. friend follow us please tell a friend yeah word of mouth is super helpful actually uh, we get a lot of people who are like i heard, heard from a friend and i'm like oh you have In better friends life? than I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's so cool. Not an internet friend. Um, <laughs> so no, that's huge. Actually, we really like when people spread it in real life because it's, uh, I don't know. I feel like it means a lot more. I always trust what my friends say mm-hmm. for better or worse. So yeah. Thanks if you for like listening. Us, thank you, you so like much us, for listening. Let us know. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. 